Welcome to Hidden Superpowers. I'm your host, Ashley Lee, and I am so excited to meet you here this week for my show of touch. And what are the touch points of kinesthesia? Kinesthesia is such an amazing way of experiencing life physically in our experiences and our relationships with ourselves and each other. Let's speak on the idea and the concept of what kinesthesia truly is. It's the ability to sense the connection with the energy of an object and its relationship to the person's body. In other words, it's really an awareness of the position and movement of the parts of the body by means of sensory receptor sites, proprioceptors, in the muscles and joints. That is, for example, inside our proprioceptors, in the middle of our hands, our feet, our ankles, our wrists, our elbows, our shoulders, our joint and our jaw, our spinous process, these are areas where we have proprioceptors, where proprioception is the sensory input that we experience that gets delivered to our brain and nervous system so that we're able to connect, assess, process, assimilate, and gather the meaning of the sensory experience we're having in regards to touch. So let's go a little deeper into it kinesthesia. We want to talk about the many layers of the sensations of touch. All of us, every single person, even animal and plant, has the ability to experience touch sensations. And inside these touch sensations, what do we do with them? Well, we can develop this deeper understanding of what we call kinesthesia. So when we feel the touch or sense this touch, what does that feel like in our body? Like, does it sting? Does it hurt? Does it itch? Does it, is it comfortable? Is it joyous? Is it love? What do we sense or derive from that sensation of touch? And then with kinesthesia, we develop this deeper ability called synesthesia. And we put together all these access points of touch inside of an idea that gives us a greater sense of reality in our world. So let's talk about touch sensation for a moment. Everybody has the ability to experience touch points on their body, in their physical life. Everybody does. So as we climb into that awareness, experience touch, what do you experience when you feel touch? When you consciously, intentionally create a movement to give or receive touch, what does that look like? Well, for an example, we can choose to give touch to our environment. For example, we can rub our hand over the top of the grass or the wheat in the field we're walking through. We can connect to that plant and the energy of it, the warmth and the sunshine that it's receiving. We can connect by giving it our energy and sharing our energy with it, sharing our love and our understanding. Maybe it too can share its love and understanding with us, including maybe being a little tickly on the fingertips. The way we can receive touch is by intentionally supporting another. We naturally inherently have the reflex or the instinct to receive touch. By newborns having a newborn primal response, that when someone, something enters their hand, they grasp it. And when they grasp it, what do they feel? Do they feel love? Do they feel intention? 
Do they feel support? Let's talk for a moment about the challenges with kinesthesia. It can be truly amazing to have challenges. Sometimes we have to climb the ladder a little bit to really understand the depth and the breadth of what kinesthesia means. And then what does it do inside of our world where we're feeling a little sensitive to touch? When we become sensitive to touch, what happens to us? For example, this gentleman, he could have been touched, for example, by an allergen. Maybe a dust or pollen entered his eye, created being itchy, red, swollen, watery, uncomfortable. So what is he doing? He's trying to rub it out, right? Touch it out. What if he was accidentally or intentionally hit by a colleague or a friend that wasn't so friendly anymore? What if he accidentally was closing his eyes and walked through a doorway and hit the doorway? Lots of ways we can receive touch and its meaning behind the touch that helps us gather information and understanding about what we perceive has happened to us or is happening to us and how will we deal with it. Many of us who have the superpower of kinesthesia are sensitive to touch. Many touches in our world especially even when I'm in the ICU, our touches are unpleasant. Our touches are not okay. Our touches poke and prod the body. Our touches are very deliberate and meaningful to save a life, but in the eyes or the feelings of a child, it may be something very scary or unknowing is going on with them. So when we are kinesthetically sensitive to touch, we get to now see the depth and the breadth of what that means so that we can change the way we're thinking and feeling. So for example, what if allergens or dust entered his eye and he's perceiving it as awful, terrible, and bad because it made his eyes water or itch or be very uncomfortable? What if instead of matching that irritation and redness, with his eye, what if he could bring love into his hand and cover his eye with love and support? What do you think would happen to that itch and experience? If he took a deep breath, calmed and said, it's okay, I have a foreign material in my eye and I choose to let it release and go. What if that would be helpful? What if if a colleague or a friend sent an unfriendly punch towards him and it landed on his eye, what if he were able to say, ah, I know we had a moment of anger. I know my friend or colleague lashed out on me. I can forgive this. I can let this go. I can choose to have an adult authentic conversation with him or her to support us not hitting each other. Or if I hit the doorway and I close my eyes for a second, I could forgive myself and the judgments I gave for myself about maybe how stupid I was or I can't believe I did that, I walked into the wall. What if we could release the way in which we perceive the touch occurring? That would help us with some of our challenges we have with kinesthesia. Take, for example, this person's knee. His knee hurts. And the guy on the left, right, is really judging the pain. Maybe the lady in his knee is maybe his mom or grandmother or his wife saying, oh, I can't stand the pain, right? So what are those? Those are projections. Those are thoughts that we have about why we have knee pain. And they're literally living energetically inside of our knee. That's what kinesthesia, super-powered people, experience. 
is they hold on to emotions and thoughts of themselves and other people inside their joints, inside their muscles, inside their body. We all do it. We just don't realize we do it. And people with kinesthesia are more sensitive to it. So the pain seems much worse for a person who is touch sensitive. It doesn't always have to mean that they're abused or have received abuse. Many times they can have this hidden superpower of kinesthesia and the ability to feel very in-depthly these deep sensations of touch, emotional touch, mental touch, spiritual touch. I know it's pretty neat, huh? How we have these abilities to feel touch in all these ways. So let's discover and open to the idea of what are the opportunities with kinesthesia. The opportunities, quite honestly, are endless. The one depicted here is an opportunity to share our love, our emotions, our intentions, our energy of caring, resourcing, and supporting one another. It can be deeply felt by the receiver and by the giver. So let's do that for each other. Even in the moments of COVID here and this idea of social distancing, what if we can begin to hug each other? And if we're not technically in the same family, what if the new hug is an honorific hug where you can feel it by the person's intentions, their volition, their meaning in life, and what it is they'd like to share with you. Touch hugs are amazing. They're where we meet heart to heart, soul to soul, person to person. We do find tremendous value in this. And what if this value is still valuable, even if we don't physically touch? And we touch with our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirit, our energy. Because kinesthetic people can feel this. Let's move our appreciation and our value to all these ways we touch each other. I want to go deeper into the realm of, so when you have kinesthesia and you really truly deeply sense all the ways in which you're experiencing touch, we have the ability to synthesize all of those touch points around our body and create an idea, a process, a structure, an honoring of what that means. We can gather many sensory touch points to synthesize at the reality and the awareness around us. Synesthesia is the ability to synthesize in the body multiple access points of, act, of sensory information. What are some of the challenges with synesthesia? Taking in all those touch points. For many, honestly, it can be overwhelming with sensory information bombarding our body bombarding our brain and nervous system, bombarding the ability for us to truly understand what these sensations are and how to navigate with them, how to determine what they are and value how we move forward with them. We enter into the, rea the realms of sensory overwhelm with some of the challenges of synesthesia. Many times we create judgments. These judgments create walls, literally walls, physically walls between us, where we're unable to see, cope, and understand what each one is intentionally wanting to touch or share with each other. Many times this wall can be depicted with ourselves too, when we have self judgments about what's happening in our world, especially when we get into the realms of sensory overwhelm. We judge ourselves, we judge our purpose, we judge what's happening to us. 
And many times we lose the discernment because we have a wall between us and what we're judging. And we have difficulty really understanding what's going on in our world. So what we do is we release these judgments. Like that touch wasn't good. That touch was bad. For example, we can experience touches in the ways of emotional imbalances. Would you all agree that this young boy can literally feel in his body, his dad's irritation, disdain and anger, maybe towards him, himself and his life? Maybe it's the emotions that the dad is actually mad at himself and not just the little boy. But the little boy takes it in and feels it, literally feels the emotions, the anger, the disdain. He's so overwhelmed by it that his brain and nervous system and his body shuts down, trying not to take in any more of that anger so that he can understand how to relate to his dad or his world around him. Then as the moments ensue, he gets into a punishment and a punishment idea that he's not okay. This is bad. This is overwhelming. And I don't know how to reframe this, change this, or talk to my dad about what's happened. Right? Stenesthesia can ha affect us in so many ways, especially emotionally. Let's talk for a moment about the opportunities with synesthesia and what that means because there's many opportunities with feeling the touch points of the world around us. We have the opportunity to open our minds, our hearts, our energy to really experiencing how we choose to touch and be touched in the world. When we open our hearts and our minds, the energy begins to flow. When we close our mind and accept the challenges and feel overwhelmed or feel powerless to create differences in our challenges, we close, right? And we create that wall between us. When we open and we let go of the wall, we choose to reframe the way we're thinking about something. The energy opens literally between our hands, in our body, in our world. And as we open this energy, what will we do with this energy? Many people share with me when they say, I ask them, how do you facilitate your healing energy for people in the world? Chiropractors, acupuncturists, massage therapists, energy healers, Many of them say, I don't know, I just open my heart and love pours out. Of course it does. And what if we have the opportunity to direct that energy, harness that energy, know that we can support it, not control it, but master it. What if we have the opportunity to recognize what is it what would we like to share with that person? Is that person experiencing emotional discord? Would we like to help move and support the emotional energies moving out? Sharing it with them. Letting them know that that gives them a moment of reprieve to open to something greater than they ever known before. Opening to new energies their body has not yet experienced. These are the opportunities with synesthesia. We have the power to harness our energy, our facilitation of our energy, and what that means, right? It, it can look like a lightning bolt, and what if it's as strong as a lightning bolt, and we can make that lightning bolt subtle, soft, supportive, loving, and empowering, not only for ourselves, but everyone around us. These are the opportunities of when we touch the energy, it can be helpful. For example, I felt like a very energetic child when I was young. It was hard for me to put my hands 
in what we would call the prayer position or the honorific position, centering ourselves in our true nature, which is love. The tips of my fingers were so much energy flowing through them that it almost felt impossible for them to come together when I was younger. I didn't know how to harness my energy and go when I'm full of energy, full of vimmer, full of vitality. That might be a little bit strong for when I'm wanting to feel peaceful inside. So I notice the energy in my hands. I breathe in and I deeply reconfigure that very powerful, vital energy into soft, subtle, supportive, loving, neutral, peaceful energy. And that's how I learned to be able to bring my hands together, not being afraid or overwhelmed of the energy, even when it was good, excitable energy. So for many, energy, the way that it touches us, the way that it impacts us, creates overwhelm. And so many people who are kinesthetically sensitive can be overwhelmed by the clothes they're wearing, by the tags they're wearing. When I was younger, I could never wear, I, I still don't wear, the concept of apparatuses, barrettes, things in my hair. I, I don't like wearing things in my hair. I don't want things on my head. I like it open, right? It's funny. I still don't wear socks, even though I grew up in Hawaii and it was kind of hot, so no one wore socks in Hawaii. I still don't wear socks on the mainland in the USA. Even if it's cold outside, I still don't like wearing socks. So those are kinesthetic symptoms, if you'd call it that, that share how I am and many others are kinesthetically sensitive. We can be kinesthetically sensitive to the energies of life. We could feel the love flow through our body and yet it feels itchy or it feels sensitive and we may reduce letting it in. We could feel the energy of an energy healer or another healer's energy flowing through our body, helping us heal and come back to balance and homeostasis in our body, like physically come back to balance. And we feel that change in our body physically, energetically, and we resist it. How many of you out there resist healing because you can feel it in your body? Breathe in and notice so that you can allow yourself to open and receive the healing energies, the love in the world. Now, if you receive energies that are negative and blaming and judgmental and not okay, controlling, you know, somebody trying to control your mind, your body, your heart, let that go through your body just like a sieve. Let that go right through is you have a choice on how you receive the energies. And receiving the energies is valuable to know or understand or recognize what they are so that we don't become afraid of each other, afraid of healing and afraid of love because we're sensitive to touch. So the opportunities inside synesthesia are grand phenomenological and really supportive to the point where we've moved to mastery, where we can start to direct our energy out to the world to support others and ourselves. Like the gentleman who heard his eye. He could send love and understanding, releasing the judgments of whatever occurred to him that impacted his eye and the healing happens like that. That's what we're here to do and recognize how our superpowers have practical and optimal abilities to create the world of love we're truly here to create. And when we do this, and when we come together with understanding and love, 
we optimize the energies between one another. We synergize our own synesthesia. Now, I wanted to share with you how we, you can join us to deepen your connection to your hidden superpowers so that you grow in the opportunity of understanding, really, it's practical use in everyday experiences with yourself and others. Join me every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific time on Awake TV Network to experience this TV show called Hidden Superpowers. Each week we dive into the different superpowers that people around the world experience. And on Wednesday evenings, enroll at accessinfiniteknowledge.com where we have remote energy healing transmissions that really help you dive deeper into what your hidden superpowers are. And for everyone experiencing the TV show here on Awake TV, we have a special offer. It's 33% off our energy transmission program, which is an amazing value. When you put in the code, all capital letters, AWAKE33, you'll receive that special offer. For combining on Tuesdays and Wednesday nights every week for 12 weeks, the opportunity to really deepen those superpowers. So tomorrow night, we'll be working with everyone's ability to have kinesthesia and develop and master the ability with your synesthesia. For today, I am so grateful you have joined me to really deepen the understanding of how we touch ourselves and each other. Thank you for joining me.